Este es Aron con Inetcomputers.com, otro video para ti hoy. Making this video showing you how to take out a motherboard out of an ATX case. This is just a standard ATX case. It's a power spec computer with a micro ATX motherboard. All you need is just a screwdriver like this. This is an old snap-on. You might even be able to see it. It's an old snap-on. SSDP31 <laughs> screwdriver Phillips it's at least a decade old it's magnetic you might want to use a magnetic screwdriver but you don't have to this has six screws on this motherboard this is a dead motherboard I've tested it you can test motherboards with multimeters but another way is if they don't post they're basically usually dead it could be the microprocessor but I went through all that. I just want to show you how to I troubleshooted all that. Microprocessors very rarely fail. Six screws and so it's a dead motherboard. I plan on putting in a dual core motherboard in this computer. You notice how it's missing a power supply that would be over here. Let's see I can probably move the camera over to the right or I'll just leave it. If you notice here in the corner there's a a hole right there it's missing the power supply I already took the power supply and put it in a different computer and let me line up this so it the way I had it before move it in a little let's see move it in a little bit that's right okay six screws and then I'm gonna take it out it's a bad motherboard in a, maybe in another video I'll just show you how to take off the heat sink and fan but for this I don't need to take it all apart I just want to show you quickly how to take out the motherboard unplug these power cables here's a power cable for the CPU fan so I'll take this one out don't forget any power cables don't forget any cables here's another cable for the the case fan and they just come right out and here's the HD audio cable back in the corner I can even zoom in how about if I zoom in a little bit and see if we can this will well that's probably too far how about like that okay so the HD audio cable back here you can take that out just pull on the cable it should come out sometimes you have to kinda of like wiggle it a little bit so that one is out and then you're gonna have USB cables so just pull up on them they come out and here's another one and you're gonna have power you might have to wiggle them a little bit but it's not like you have to use that much force and here's another cable this is probably the power they're usually marked usually let's see but these see this is marked USB you should be able to see that that's probably power now since there's no power supply if there was a power supply there would be a 24 pin power right here that would be connected you would it has a a release that you press in on and then pull up you don't just want to start pulling up because it'll it won't come out there's a release on on those molex connectors and then some power supplies have four, uh, another four pin power which I'm trying to see right here you see right on, on the other side of the can you see it on camera you might not be able to see it let me move the computer a little bit to show you there's a four pin power connector right right here by my my finger right there there's four pin power so you that has a release too that you press in on and pull the cable out but this motherboard had a power supply that I needed to use so I, that's why I got I got rid of it so let me move this back move it in a little bit there we go so now that all the cable power cables are unplugged then you go for the SATA cables they have so they have releases so you have to press push in and then pull up and then I'm just gonna throw this to the side 
same thing with this one you they have releases push in and then pull up you see the release right there you just press in and then pull out if you just try to pull these SATA cables out they have a release so you could possibly rip the plastic out the connector so and then it's connected to the DVD so I'm just gonna that doesn't have a release I'm just gonna pull it out and there we go we'll just set that aside it's got RAM the RAM still good I know that so just push out push away on each end push away and you see how it just pops up and then just hold it by the edges and place it somewhere I'll place it here and then same thing with this one press outwards and then press with you can use your thumb too and then it sometimes they just pop up and then you just hold it by the edges and you put it somewhere you know like maybe on an anti-static bag or whatever I'm gonna set these aside over here They're, that's still good RAM because they are two gigs so they're still good okay so we have the rest of the cables unplugged I just to to make it you know easier I just push all the cables underneath away and then you know these you can't but you know eventually I'll take the fan and the heatsink now there's four screws for the heatsink and it screws down on the motherboard you can see right there so you just you know unscrew the four screws I'm not gonna do that right now cuz I just want to get the motherboard out you do not have to take the fan off there's a case there's a side case fan can you see that uh, yeah there it is you do not have to take that out usually you don't have to take that out to get the motherboard out some motherboards used to slide back in the day they would just slide out the back end they don't they don't make I don't think they design cases like that anymore they're cheaper cases but they're still solid it's made out of metal okay that was my keyboard that's all right the video is still recording so then it's just six screws so you can use a a, an electrical screwdriver but you know if you work on computers a lot yeah but you know then you just take out one screw at a time there's six set them aside don't lose them there's gen there's one over here let's see is that is that was that one on camera yeah there's one there there's one over here by the the IO shield I don't know if you can see that on camera. Yeah, I think you can. Unscrew that one. It's kind of a strange angle. All right, then there's one back there again by the slots, the upgrade slots, the PCI. they're usually not really torqued that much they just they just have to be tight and there's another one right here by the RAM and you just so this is where a this is where a magnetic screwdriver helps because you don't want to have spare screws because it can short circuit but it's nice to have a magnetic screwdriver because of exactly this you're working kind of in a closed area and la laptops are even worse they're really yeah I don't have the best magnetic screwdriver it's old here's where the PCI Express card would be you would have just pressed down on the release and then it would and then you'd pull it up and then finally now some motherboards are screwed down by more screws it just depends on six seven eight whatever and then there's the final one and 
then you have the IO shield. Now what you can do, let's see. There must be another one somewhere. See, I don't see another screw. Maybe it's the IO shield, but it should. Let's see, there's that one. There, there it goes. You see how you just want you want to pull, but you don't want to get too out of control. What I mean by that is that happens. I've noticed on some other boards, they're f probably factory tightened. Nobody's ever removed them, and sometimes you think that you just you have all the screws and you think you're going crazy you're going insane well there's I only see six screws and you pull and it won't come out sometimes you just have to be firm aggressive but not you don't want to just yank stuff out because you don't want to bust like the IO port in the back so what I did I ended up pulling away you might want to pull away from the IO port the back of the case and now you see it just came out so that's it that is how you take out a mother. This is a tip, and you just want to hold it on the, by the edges. You don't necessarily want to, like, don't, you know, put all your hands all over the, because your hands has oils. But this isn't too bad. It's really not that dusty. But this is a standard micro TX case, and it's it's okay to hold it by the the heat sink and the fan. Probably the heat sink would be better, but this is a smaller heat sink. But it, it's uh, it's in there. It's not going to go anywhere. Let me zoom out because there's really no reason to zoom in now. And so that's it. That's how you pull it out. And you notice how it's got no, nothing broke off. So that's why you want to be kind of aggressive but not assertive but not necessarily so aggressive that you just yank it out. And nothing broke off. This is a dead motherboard. I've tested the CPU and all that I take I took it out I put new thermal paste it's most likely the motherboard you can test these with a I know it's the motherboard you can test with a multimeter but CPUs very rarely fail they do fail so I guess I could you know I don't have another problem is I could test the motherboard with the multimeter but I don't have another processor that I don't think that'll fit this is a dual core no it's a quad core I think it's a quad core I don't think I have another processor anyways so that's all you do to pull out the motherboard and you can set it aside or whatever and then there's the IO port back in the back I don't know if you can see that that not it wasn't let me show you though because let's see on camera let's see ah, there goes my keyboard again you see there's the IO port you see these little pin these little th guys there see you don't want to just start yanking the motherboard up and just rip it out because you could bend these these IO ports on older computers are sometimes hard to find and you'd be surprised what people will try to charge you for these so so that's it so you have an empty case now and then in my next video I'm going to show you how to install a motherboard it's just reverse but I just wanted to do it this way just to show you quickly how to get the motherboard out, you know, unplug everything, make it, I, I keep things nice. I like keeping all the cables back underneath here so they don't get in my way. And then that's it. And then you can just make sure that you get a the correct motherboard. And you notice there's one, two, three, four, and then you have these. Some, you have these guys that are that you screw down on so there's just six the six connectors in this case so you want to make sure that the replacement motherboard ha lines up because you really want to make sure that you use all six connectors you want to screw down six there's two of these posts here and then there's the the other well that actually three six yeah four you know and then the two posts that's it adios